Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So today, uh, just a quick video where we talk about a bug that I noticed in X64 debug, uh, which has been fixed now, which is being exploited by a uh, packer, which we see a lot of malware families using over the past month or so. So a little while ago, a subscriber who wants to remain anonymous uh, sent us in a sample and asked us to unpack it. And when we loaded up in uh, X64 debug, the debugger just crashed immediately. So we were like, what, what the heck is going on here? So in this video, we're going to show you guys uh, what was going on, how to fix it, and then how X64 debug fixed it. So without further ado, let's jump into our VM and get started. So we have our sample here sitting on the desktop, which I've just copied over, and we have X64 debug open here. So check out what happens here. We drag the sample over and boom. So when this first happened, I thought, hmm, maybe I did something wrong. Uh, maybe I need to actually open the sample from X64 debug for some reason. Uh, again, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, it was just something that I thought. So uh, what I did was I opened X64 debug again, and then I went to file open, and I found the file on the desktop here, and open it up, boom, again. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was uh, when I first noticed this, I just started to use uh, Ollie because Ollie handles this no problem. And I was able to uh, unpack the sample and it's not a big deal. But I was trying to figure out why the heck this wouldn't work in X64 debug. And I'm fortunate to know a lot of folks who are uh, a lot more experienced at reverse engineering than I am. And so we all sort of got together and we did like a quick look at the sample and tried to figure out what the heck is going on. So I can't take full credit for this. Uh, it was kind of a group effort. But basically what happened was we, we took a look at this and uh, let me show you what's going on here. So we open up PEBear here, pull the sample in, and there's something not quite right about it. So let's look at the optional header. We scroll down here, look at the export directory. So for those of you who aren't familiar with PE files, normally when you have an executable, uh, you don't really have an export directory because there's no reason to call into any entry point other than the main entry point for the executable. So you only really see an export directory in DLLs where you have a bunch of different entry points that you can call. So first of all, to see an export directory here is kind of weird. And then if we go and we can do a right click, follow our VA, and we can see that there's definitely something not right here. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So if we pull up the core Kami P file poster here. So if you guys haven't seen this poster, uh, it's just a really awesome piece of work from Korkami. I'll link it in the description of the video below. And basically it's just a map of uh, all the different parts of a PE file so you can kind of figure out what's going on, how it all fits together. So if we look here, we can see a pointer to the export directory here. We scroll over here a little bit and I'll just zoom in. Um, we can see that the uh, first four bytes are gonna be the characteristics of the export directory. Then we have a timestamp, uh, major minor version, uh, both of them two bytes, so four bytes in total. Um, and then we have uh, a bunch of other stuff. And then we have a pointer to the actual export table, which is a chain of uh, exports. So now we know this is what it should look like. Let's go and look at the uh, MSDN documentation for this. So on MSDN, they're showing us here that the uh, export flags, the first four bytes should be zero, the reserved is zero. And the next four bytes are a timestamp. So let's look at our VM here and you'll see why I said that this doesn't look right. So if we look at, uh, we follow our VA, we look at the first four bytes here, uh, those definitely aren't zero. <laughs> and then we look at the uh, next four bytes here. That's not a timestamp that's gonna mean anything <laughs> relevant. I mean, that, that timestamp is like in the 1970s or something like that. So there's obviously something not right here. And if we were to go and say, uh, look at the export table, so we can go to the uh, export table here and we can see that it actually just points to uh, space out in the PE file with, with nothing in it. It's just complete garbage. So that's one thing that looks kind of weird. Um, and we, as we were trying to troubleshoot this, we thought, well, why don't we uh, just come back here? And since it's an EXE file, not a DLL, why don't we just knock out the uh, export directory the way that it should be? So we make these zeros here, save this file uh, out to desktop. So with uh, fixed exports, save it out and uh, let's open up x64 debug again, copy the file over and it loads up no problem. <laughs> So first of all, that's the trick that we used uh, for the past month to deal with these uh, packed samples that are crashing X64 debug. We would just knock out the exports and then run it in the debugger, no problem. However, I noticed that a couple days ago, there was a new release for X64 debug that just came out in which to actually fix this issue properly. Um, so the new version of X64 debug that's just out has a try accept around this error, uh, so it won't crash anymore and you can just use it. So uh, on your part, I guess if you're seeing crashes like this, the advice would be to 
upgrade uh, x64 debug to use the latest version. And if you're not able to do that, you can always just knock out the uh, export directory. <laughs> So this got me thinking that we use x64 debug pretty much daily. And as you guys can tell in the videos, we use it all the time. And these guys are working pretty hard on it. I mean, they're supporting it. Obviously a, a lot of effort has gone into uh, fixing bugs and maintaining it. So this kind of got me thinking about how we could give back a little bit. So what we decided to do was we looked at all of our revenue that we got from these ads on uh, YouTube. As you can see, we're not, uh, we're not becoming millionaires making these videos. And so over the past year, uh, we made about 130 bucks on the YouTube channel. So we just decided to put that to good use and we donated it to the uh, X64 Debug Foundation. So if you guys want to support them, uh, I'll put a link to their donate button below. But if you think about it, you guys are the reason why we have that YouTube revenue. And so it's kind of like you guys donated to them anyway. So no pressure or anything like that. But we really like their tools. We like the fact that they're supporting it, that it's open source. So we figured we'd give them our, <laughs> our YouTube ad revenue. So that's it for the video today. I know a super short one. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you guys are seeing X64 debug crash with new malware samples. This is why, and this is how to fix it. Again, the latest version of X64 debug that's released on their site fixes this problem. So just update, you should have no problems. And of course, as always, there's been a bit of a delay in putting out videos because me and Sean are working on this other project that will be released soon. It just basically takes all of our time. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time left over to make videos. But again, once that's released, we'll be back on schedule. So uh, thanks for bearing with us. And until next time, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious. Thank you.